welcome to the public, I'll say that. And um, we'd like to excuse Chair Moss, at least for a little bit. He has, um, he's in a um, legal mediation that he's in and out of, so he may be joining us in and out. Um, his day job has required a little bit of extra time over the last couple of days, so we're excusing him. So, but welcome everyone here. And let's go ahead and do a roll call so, so that we can, actually, I've got to read, let me read here. Um, as authorized by Utah Code 52-4, this meeting is being held electronically with an anchor location at the State Board of Education offices, and the public may also attend electronically. I don't have to do the exits and stuff here. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead with a roll call vote. I have, well, I'm just going to read down my list I have here. Um, board Member Real, were you able to join us? Yes. Okay. Uh, board Member Booth, are you with us? Okay, he's here. Board Member Bogus. Yes. Okay, she's present. Um, board Member Klein, are you online? Yes. Yes. Okay, Board Member Davis. Does anyone know if Cindy was here or is she online? Okay, let me just circle that so we. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Earl is here. Board Member Green. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Hart. Here. Uh, Board Member Kerry. Okay, so. Oh, okay, okay. So we may be missing Board Member Kerry and Board Member Davis today. Board Member Wood. Board Member Hymas? Here. Uh, Board Member Lear? Here. Board Member Moss is, well, there he is temporarily maybe <laughs> in and out. So we've got him for a minute. Um, Board Member Norton? Okay, we're not certain. We'll see there. Board Member Strait? Uh, here, I can see him. So, okay, so we have three that are missing, and um, we'll have board member Moss in and out um, as as we can keep him. Hopefully, we'll keep hey. him for a minute. So, you and we... Oh, sorry. I okay, should just you announce wanna... my excuse. We did. We did. Oh, you did? I'm yeah. sorry. I'm waiting to hear from my mediator, so... Okay. Do you... Molly, do you want to take over? Yes. Okay. Cool. So, I'm going to turn the time over to um, Vice Chair Hart yes. as we move into... Mission Vision. Okay, so Cindy Davis is here. Okay. Hello, Member Davis. And just a point of information, we have the microphones on what's called automatic. So you just click it and talk. Um, your responsibility, though, is to unclick when you're finished talking because we still, um, we have to make that space for, for the next speaker. So, um, and there's only, you can only keep a few, no, a few in queue. Our first item of business um, is action item 5.1, uh, USBE mission and vision. And mm -hmm. do you want to pull up who's driving today so I can, you're driving, Kelsey? Okay. Um, pull up where we left off. Or why don't we start with, there we go. Have to review where we're at. Yeah. So if you'll. Yeah, thank you. It's it's kind of a I've got a long document. Um, is there anyone that wants to start out the conversation on mission vision? I thought I might have a volunteer uh, member. Um, sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, she's trying to get on the Zoom. We just did odds and ends, so I don't know. Okay. We will um, we'll keep an eye out for her. She's driving. Okay. So it might be spotty a little bit. Okay. 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 All right. Member Booth, I, I know you've been working on some things. What have you got for us? Okay. Just over the little lunch break. Um, why don't you go down to like the bottom of that Google Doc, the, like the very bottom. It's way down. Mm -hmm. 
and you'll find some. There you go, those blue things. So um, Brandon and I were just brainstorming uh, over this little break. We were looking for an abstract phrase that would kind of just be a one-liner. Uh, Jenny and I talked a little bit before Brent joined me. And uh, this, I don't know that this is it, but somehow we need a phrase that then out of which the mission statement of what what we are planning to do um, comes and then the values and then our tools that we use as the board to accomplish that that Jenny and others have provided in the other documents the mission is basically a lot of what you saw on Jenny's um, just kind of re rephrased there and not nearly as beautifully presented from a visual standpoint so but I couldn't figure out how to make any pretty colored boxes or text boxes over the lunch break so I'll get a quick course in that and next time we'll bring it looking prettier I don't know if any of those speak to you public education for an excellent life public education for a better life just as a vision statement or something like unto that, but just about that long. It wouldn't have to even be that, although I would love to get public education in there. Um, that's my, and then mission, prepare Utah graduates to succeed and lead, preserve our constitutional republic, continue learning and live meaningful lives. And that could be shortened if any of you wanted to take any of those pieces out. I'm just getting everything in there that different people have put in over the last little bit. Then as you go down to the values, I kind of just picked and chose my favorites of the ones that have been in a portrait of a graduate, and this isn't necessarily saying what's going to be in portrait of a graduate. Uh, there are lots of different lists of values, but I loved rec academic rigor, resilience, communication, service, collaboration, creativity, and accountability. And I s forced myself to stick with just seven, so I wasn't exceeding um, what Stephen Covey's uh, cardinal rule of not more than seven. And then the, the tools, academic standards, information systems, management of taxpayer funds, operations, policy. And then under that, we have the goals. And we've had those for who knows what the goals will be after, as we solidify what we're going to do with the strategic plan and the things we've already gone through. So this is just a jumping off place. Uh, I'm not completely married to anything I was just trying to find um, something that we could use as a, a trigger or a, a springboard for some really good ideas that will hopefully come together quickly so that we can stay on the schedule that our board leadership have so <laughs> positively put down on our little agenda there so there you go thank you member booth uh we have some other lights let's hear some comments and then see if we can meld and and um, come up with something that um, each one of us can be proud of and can support and can move forward um, that's really what we're looking for right something that that resonates with us um, our common common ground are, are what, what lights us up. So um, that is our, that's what we're looking for. So uh, Member Davis. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I like a lot of what I see up here. I think maybe I would just switch the mission and the vision. I mean, the mission I have always understood is the quick punch, the less than seven words for easy memory. And then the vision is how you get how you accomplish that. So the mission would be one of the public education for an excellent life. The vision is how do we get there? We prepare you to graduates to succeed and lead a lot of the things. Um, I, I could be wrong, but Sarah um, 
probably has way more study, Sarah Young, than I, deputy, oh, titles, it's chief of, chief officer, what are we here? Chief, chief, chief of, of staff. staff, Young, thank you. Um, so we have the, we have this, um, we also have some, what's that? Right. So let's, um, what I'm trying to do is pick up where we left off, which is kind of hard. So can, oh, okay. Okay. And you were addressing that. Okay. Um, so first we're, we'll go back to when they presented on the strategic plan. Um, the vision is what we aspire to and why it matters is we motivate and inspire change from here to there, what we aspire to. Then the mission is what we do and how we do it or, and why it matters, it's our reason for being and how we serve. So there's a starting point. Um, uh, Chief of Staff Young, do you have any, did you put this together? Was this yours? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the mission vision, which is which, right up there. Yeah, so traditionally it's been approached similar to the way you described it, where um, that vision piece is what is our vision for the overall like K-12 system. And then in your mission statement, you get more specific about like, so what is your role within that space and what are your strategies to be okay. able to achieve that? So short would be the vision. I mean, so length is subjective <laughs> um, in terms of really what you um, kind of foresee in terms of the board's role. Um, I will say traditionally, these are both shorter statements because they're then followed by the additional components related to then the goals and strategies that, so it's like the umbrella to um, those folks. I, and I think, I think that mission is, is relatively short. I don't think it's a, it's a paragraph. So, so this is one. Um, we also have on the table, um, because I believe we ended with a motion. I, I believe we did. So we need to bring that back to the table. Are you pulling that up? Well, I think, didn't, did you just send it? Yeah, that's, and it's just some other other thoughts, just touching yeah. base with a few other board members. Just some thoughts, once again, kind of like what Randy did. It's not the actual motion, because we ha already have some things that we've, we've got in motion, but some other considerations. Um, but I think on this consideration, I think the vision and mission, the language, like the one is reversed. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, well I'll show you when Kelsey pulls it up. But it tried to take some of the same language, both from law as well from others. It's, once again, it's just a suggestion as we're working on our already stuff that we have in place. Um, are these documents on the agenda? Are they in the backup? Um, Natalie, I did pass those out yesterday. So. Oh, sorry. I'm talking about the ones that are showing on the screen from I, Randy and. Randy. I think Randy just sent it in this. This afternoon this to the full board oh it's on the it's on the yes it's on the Google Doc it's just at the bottom so if you scroll all the way down you'll see it okay and then here's what was shared so we're just kind of getting this all back into the into the collective workspace here so we've got a mission, which is to open doors of opportunity for Utah children and a vision of academic and organizational excellence 
for the Utah public education system. And yeah, then, so the, this just go ahead. it's similar formatting, but I think the words vision and mission have to be switched here. I think the vision would be the overarching with the aspiration, right? Okay. Yeah. Isn't that, yep. And then the mission based on what we just yeah, said. Yeah, based on what we just read. This is just some thoughts. Um, um, and once again, these are. Does it fit? You I think? Don't, actually vision don't think it is does. what we is right? aspire to. It isn't the vision the aspirational. And the mission and is the, the role. Yeah. Okay. I would. I would, I would the, flip it. But not the actual words. But the but the the vision the mission word and the vision word would be up here. And the um, language would stay the same. Because mission is what we do and how we do it. So that would be what's okay. listed Academic and in organizational the box. Organizational excellence. I know. I know. So, um, and I know we're asking for um, computer um, gymnastics here, but can you now flip back to the Google Doc? I know, but on the can you go to the the one we had previously that Randy just a member booth just shared okay yes so I guess my question is what do we see comparing this vision to the vision in the graphic what resonates where are you at with um, is one speaking to you more than others Right. That talks louder to you. The only, just a couple of thoughts on the mission here, and that that's why visually on the other one it was, can you go down now, <laughs> Kelsey? <laughs> We're having you. Um, that the outcomes had the things that are listed called participate in civic responsibilities, these things here. The, the mission being very simple, a mission that has too many pieces, you then have to take all those pieces and apply them to the things that we do. Does, I don't know if that makes sense, where it, when it's very simplified, and then we have, these are the things that we do, this is how we're going to do it. In this case, on the values end of it, we actually are saying that um, we're serving families and students and LEAs. It's a system accountability or, or whatever we want there. That's that's infused through it. So um, anyway, just some thoughts. I there would I once again this is just thoughts. This isn't where we ended with our motions. These are just some additional things. Okay, to so you've said motions. So now um, you've got yourself in that space. Now I think we need to pull up the motions so that we know, and I think then we'll be up to speed where we left off. So, and while you, while you do that, Member Hymas? Just, just wondering, sorry, is there a motion on the floor right now? Well, I, there is. Potentially, there could Potentially, be. yes. I just, I, well, I'll just wait for that. Then. Yeah, that's what she's pulling up now. But we wanted to set the stage and get you thinking kind of in that space, it's hard to, it's hard to do in a in a group where we need to be together as a in open meeting trying to do this. This is easier done in smaller groups. Just back so and I think forth. we we started with the vision and said we need to go to the mission. I think that's where we ended up because we started there and had we added some other things possibilities to the that circle part and then it was decided there was a motion to go to mm -hmm. the mission and start working there and um, board member Bogus at some point had asked us to make sure we vote on each thing individually so we were getting a yep. an individual vote um, that that was voted on and, and accepted and then I think that we didn't really we just still had it all out there so. right right so we were on the mission I'm not sure exactly where it, I can't remember exactly where we landed on that. This was what we were considering, and then um, yep. Member Box was the motion to divide to consider each bullet point separately. Yep. Well, the mission and then the bullet points separately passed. Mm -hmm. From what I can. So we were, I think we were discussing mission at that point. Right. But I don't know if there was a. There yes. Was yeah. And we need to decide on 
these individual items is what I thought we left off with. Hi. Oh yeah, sorry, Gills. I have no idea. From uh, what? what the motions document said from our special session on July 31st, um, we a motion was introduced to adopt the currently highlighted mission that is bolded and underlined with these bullet points attached to them. Member Bogus made a motion to divide, which passed. So we would uh, consider just the bolded underlined mission language, vote that up or down, and then consider the bullet points, vote those up or down. Yeah. If I am remembering and reading correctly. And that's where I thought we were, but. I think each bullet point is also considered in yeah. Yes, and we do them individually, or is others. how I, or others, right. Or and I believe, uh, Member Norton, you have your hand up. Board Member Klein, um, I think it, you're, you're unmuted. I sorry. believe it's you. And did we lose, did we lose Member Norton? She's there, but she's still muted. Okay, so let's, well, just, oh, here she is. I'm getting unmuted. Um, I just have some wordsmithing, but I don't think this is the appropriate time. So at some point, you know, I do have a, some, some, a little bit different language, but I, it's not, it's more granular. Okay. Tell me, is it to vision or is it to mission? It's to kind of, um, using, using the, the chart that we had handed to us yesterday. It is over in the circle. Okay. So, okay. Yes. so when you get there, yeah. vision. when that you is get vision. there, we can do that. It's kind of the vision, yes. All right, so um, without further, what's that? I have a recommendation. Yeah, well, I believe we have, yep, go for it. Cindy, were you in? Were you? Uh, go ahead, I was just gonna. Okay, I was just gonna, to I would one. make a motion that we make, that the vision, sorry, mission be academic and organizational excellence. I guess we can add Utah public school system. It seems to be wordy to me instead of simplified. Um, maybe we can have a discussion about that, but that's what I would add is just that academic and organizational excellence over the top of the items that we affect or impact, so. Is that the vision or is that the mission? That would be the mission. That's where we're at, the mission. And then if excellence, yeah, it says vision on here, but it the if keep in mind, I think the wording is flipped. I know Cindy's thinking that's not the case. <laughs> okay. All right, so we got a motion and a second. <laughs> oh, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> y'all don't do that. Um, Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a it second? Just, it has to do with our definitions. If we're defining the aspirational as the vision, am I wrong? That's what, that's what it is, aspiration, but it's just a concept, an abstract concept or idea. It's not that's the overarching. I see. Exactly. I see. That's the vision. But we're ta yes, but we're talking about the mission. So scroll down. Our, we've already decided okay. on a vision, haven't we? No. no. Yes. We decided nothing. I thought that it said. Okay, we never finalized it. All right. That's right. We voted to move on. All right. Um, I already have it. Okay. Go ahead, Member uh, Chair Moss. All right. Maybe this is just a suggestion. Maybe it's an amendment. There's so much good stuff in here. I, I look at what was in this document of vision. And it talks about how students will have the knowledge and skills to blah, blah, blah. That sounds like a vision. Um, I'm wondering, there's also two different missions that have been pro proposed. And I'm curious if there's any way to combine those. I, 
personally, what resonates with what resonates <laughs> with me is academic and organizational excellence that open doors of opportunity for all Utah children. I don't know if I'm just trying to combine, you know, two things that don't match, but to me that is our mission. I mean that that that's inspirational to me to open doors of U opportunity for all Utah children. I think this kind of captures what this organization does. We, you know, academic and organizational excellence is what we're about here, which opens doors for all Utah children. I'm just going to throw it out there. If it doesn't go anywhere, I'm fine. This is. Yeah, doors of whatever this was to op that opened doors of opportunity for for all Utah children. Again, I'm just looking just at good ideas. That, yes, yeah, that opens doors of opportunity for all Utah children. I think wherever this language came from, came from that's here is what I'm pulling from, and it says doors of opportunity for Utah children. We might say all Utah children because I think we're inclusive and we want to serve every kid wherever but they are. Utah children suggest that's, we're, we're leaving people. Oh, I would assume it means children that are in Utah, that not necessarily too. children that are from Utah. I mean, our, our job is to serve Utah children, right? That's, Wherever that's they... What, that's what I'm saying, though. Does that people. sound exclusive, you, you're saying? Or? No, I'm saying that it is oh, Utah yes, right. children. Is the doors of opportunity for Utah children. Yeah. Or all Utah children. I don't know. That, to me, combines an organizational statement of what we do with the aspiration Which, that that is what we're doing, is we're opening doors of opportunity. So I'll just throw it out there. I'm Member not, Davis, I think you have an idea. I think all you I children all is a there. statement of inclusivity that is important. And I so like I all. would like all, frankly. It, it, but whoever you are, we're here for you. And how we do that is through academic and organizational excellence, right? So okay. that's my thought. Thank you. Member Hymas. Sorry, was this a motion by Member Moss? Was something Let's make it a motion we... to amend. Why not? I'll just throw it out there. I don't know if do I need that? Can I, can I do a motion and get a second? or? Was there a, a second on the first motion? Oh, all right. So. <laughs> Just make it a motion. Just make it a motion. Yeah, thank you. Right. That's, that's my motion. Is there a second? Maybe not. There's. <laughs> it dies a sad, lonely Okay, death. <laughs> so we're back to. It's okay. Okay, hush. Put, put some other things okay. together. Okay, hi, miss. Thank you. I don't know how to move to adopt this paper here. So I, I, my motion is to, to uh, have the mission read to open doors of opportunity to Utah children, and I'll speak to it if I get a second. Is there a second? Second. We notice that it's not a complete sentence. The chair notices. Okay. Thank All you. right. All right. We have a motion and a second. We can, we can for a words. sentence fragment to be <laughs> um, that the mission statement be open doors of opportunity for to open. open oh even better we started with a proposition okay to open doors of opportunity for all Utah children here's thank you yeah May you can I, speak to your fragment my fragmented uh, again when we first started this there was there was an exercise that Jim that Chair Moss did, and remember he pulled up uh, very well-known companies throughout the world, and I've just pulled up two of them. Remember Coca-Cola, the mission starts with to refresh the world. Oh, oh my, how dare them start, uh, dare they, dare they, they start They are not two. an education agency. That, it says mission. What is Coca-Cola's mission statement to refresh the world? Nike, our mission is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete. They are short, concise, and they are doing something. That's the point I believe that Member Davis was trying to make. That's that's what I've understood a mission to be. The two of us could be wrong. I mean, you you notice that we talked together, then she seconded a motion that she would have made and I would have seconded. So right. we, we could be in left field, but that's where our thoughts but are. But you're that's, together in left field. And, and, that's and I appreciate this one here that is short and concise and is grammatically incorrect. Thank you. Member Bogus. Um, so I, I would speak against the motion. I think we have, uh, it sounds great, it's very ethereal, but it's not the proper role of government, and we are a government agency. Um, and, well, our agency enacts the missions of the board. 
So I think we need to consider what does our agency do? We're charged with control and supervision. We're not charged with opening doors of opportunity. We actually have a constitutional charge and that's not it. So thank you. All right. And I have like uh, to speak. Yes, uh, Member Norton, thank you. Um, and I would like to speak in we favor of you. it. You lost me? No, well, just hold the microphone closer to your mouth. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, I would like to speak in favor of this motion as I feel that the doors of opportunity are education. Okay. And if it makes you feel, we could say the mission of the State Board of Education is to open doors of opportunity for all Utah children. But we don't need that. I, the, the short statement is great. Okay. Um, so I know someone's going to. Are you clicking? Am I going to what? Oh, Who? This a while ago. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, that's all right. Member Lear. I, 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 I like this better, and I, I've missed, I missed, think I missed the last meeting, but I, I like this better, but I'm not persuaded by Nike and Coca-Cola goals. I'm not a business. This is, I, I've been saying for 50 years, education is not a business. And I don't want it to have business-like missions or visions. Um, so I do like to open doors of opportunity. It's At least it's non-business. How did you turn your mic off? Oh, did okay. Will you? Um, okay. Will you just please um, click your button again? Careful what you wish for. Okay. Well, Member Moss is going off. Okay. I wonder if it's because we don't actually open. Kids have to open the doors, so we create opportunities. We. Yeah, create conditions or whatever that allow students to open doors. So I just something to keep in mind there. That and I think that might speak a little bit to what Board Member Bogus is saying that we don't we don't do that for kids. They have to do it for themselves. But the it is education that allows that to happen. So we either create, we provide, we what was what were you saying? Create conditions, create conditions something like that. Create conditions of opportunity for Utah children. I don't know, something to think about there. Is that a motion? Or an amendment? Do you like education, op educational opportunity? Or is this just kind of Tell me. We've got a second. Oh, I thought we were going to. Oh, OK. OK. I will make sure that they use their mics. My, I, I will do that. Member Moss. I will be quick. <laughs> no, I like this. I, I think we open the doors. Students have to walk through them. I mean, th there's a lot of legitimate debate about the function of government. I mean, what we do is we build schools, we hire teachers, we set standards, districts do curriculum, teachers do lesson plans. We do things, and I think that is opening of a door, and, and the kids have to choose to walk through it. So I'm not conflicted about whether this state's an inaccurate role for government. I think somewhere in this, in, in the one that went around yesterday, um, well, at some point, let's see, this one had elements of the mission of how we do it, and somewhere I think their academic excellence is, is how we open doors, but I, I like this. I just speak in favor of it as an, an inspirational, aspirational description of what we try to do for kids, and so as that top line statement, I like it, and then I think, you know, we fleshed it out a little bit um, with, you know, wh how we do that. Um, which includes academic excellence and policy and the other stuff. So I like it as a, as a top line statement of what we're about. So for my clarity and clarity of anyone following along, this is what we are proposing as a mission. The mission is to open doors of opportunity for all Utah children. But then we have bullet points to debate. Still, uh, right. right? So but that's what I'm saying. I, there, there might be other elements to this, but I think this has been proposed as the top line. Okay. Kind of lead, right? Gotcha. Okay. And Member Davis. Um, I, I didn't actually come up with the, that wording, but 
I'll tell you where the idea stemmed. We were in Primary Children's Hospital doing our service project, and I saw the mission on the elevator. And it was also not grammatically correct, but it was short enough to remember, and I still remembered it several days later. And I was like, man, I wish we had something like that. And it was literally, their mission was um, children first and always. That's it. And I thought, why aren't, why can't we have something that is easy to remember like that? Like every single thing that I do as a board member, whether it's working on academic standards or oversight and compliance, it's, it's all in hopes that our children of Utah have doors open to them in the future. It's, it's, that's why I'm here, period. So I, I guess we don't have to use that language. We could use different language, but I just want a little background of where that stemmed mm -hmm. from. And yes, I ended a sentence with a preposition also. Sorry, Carol. Uh, member Strait? Yes, I, I don't think mission statements are proprietary, right? <laughs> anyway. We are I, not going to steal theirs. I dropped I, the line. It is beautiful. It is. I mean, it is very beautiful. Yeah, anyway, thank you. Yes, yes. Um, any other comments? It, um, following, following the Robert's rules. Um, I oh okay. Thank you, uh, Member Klein. Go ahead. Yes, sorry. Um, I just have uh, one to, to put forward myself. Is this a good time to do that, or are we voting on each of these individually? Well, it looks like we've got several on the table. Can I add do. another one? You can. Um, yes, you can do a substitute motion if you would like. We are trying to stick to some sort of order, but um, it's also a, it's kind of, it's hard because we're trying to do an organic process, but do it in an orderly fashion. So um, go for it. Please propose what you have. Okay, okay so I would propose uh, for it to read to provide traditional academic foundations to students who, with their families, Hold are on. free to create their own opportunities. Oh, sorry. Can can you read it all the way once and then read it slow so that we can get it into the into um, typed into the document? Yes. Okay. Go for yes. it. Yes. So, to provide traditional academic foundations to students who, with their families, are free to create their own opportunities. And I'll read it slower now. To provide Got it. traditional academic foundations yep. to students yep. who, with their families, are free to create their own opportunities. Thank you. Full sentence with punctuation noted. Impressive. Do we have a second for that? Okay, we have a second from Member Bogus. Uh, comments? Thoughts? Um, I, Would you like to speak I, I to just, it? Go ahead. Sure. Um, I just think that as, uh, as a system, it's our job to provide those um, academic foundational skills and knowledge, a, a place where they can access and, op and find opportunities according to their desire um, to, to uh, make something of themselves. Um, I think the more students and families have the freedom to choose those opportunities and are uh, free from the compulsory nature of it, the more I think our students will thrive and love learning. The more um, compulsory it is, uh, the more it tends to um, damp, put a damper on that, that natural desire to learn and grow and thrive and, and succeed. So when it comes from the student, from the families, and they feel free to chart their own course, 
I think we will see greater success. Our job is simply to provide um, those resources for them so that they can take advantage of them. Excellent. Thank you. So I do see the, the, uh, I see an idea that's, that seems to be throughout them. We're talking about the opportunities and opportunities being available. Um, member Norton, you have your hand up. I'm sorry. It's down. Okay. Coming down. All right. All right. Um, any other Vice comments? Hart? Yeah, sure. So, um, I seconded this motion. I do like it better than the other one, but I still think we're not in the framework of um, the USBE as either, whether it be the body or the agency. Um, we are not the ones doing that work. That, that's very local. Um, academic foundations is, and, and like I said, I like this better than the other one. I want to be very clear about that. However, academic foundations is really, that's like classroom level stuff. That's that we're, we're, we're a state level agency elected body, are we doing the work of academic foundations in this room? So do you have a amendment? Do you, how do you want to change to, what are your, what do you suggest? I just think we're headed down the, my suggestion is we go down a different path because I think this is absolutely catastrophically the wrong path to go down. Okay. We are not charged with academic foundations. We're charged with control and supervision. Okay. So, uh, all right, so let's stay together on this, please. So the substitute motion that's been made and seconded, um, let's go to no comment. Oh, you have, okay, Member Wood. I am just wondering how we, you know, we've been charged with the OLAG audit to align ourselves um, mm -hmm. legislatively. And when I look at the mission and vision in the legislate, in the code, um, that too is is more along the line of the greater vision of the system. Um, it says to create the, to assure the best, oh, sorry, my computer keeps scrolling. Um, to assure Utah the best educated citizenry in the world. I mean, if that's not <laughs> as big, as broad as you can get. So I think we need, we, yeah, can find a balance of aspirational if we're, they, we've been charged to align. So obviously they're looking at what is the big system goal and we are, have that general control and supervision over that system. So I think we need to think about that bigger perspective. Okay. All right. I see no other comments. So let's, oh yeah, you can, I'm sorry. I, and I would agree with that same thing. I do think we need a aspirational that is uplifting and, you know, but then to speak to member Bogus is I think that's, as we move from that down to the next level, we are, this is, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Um, kind of a thing. And it should speak to those very same things, but I think there is that, you know, catchy, uh, so to speak, that just um, has a positive direction. I have, I have an edit for mine, if that's okay. Okay. Go for it. Based on this feedback, um, sure. I would, have it read to create the conditions that allow teachers to provide traditional academic foundations to students who with their families are free to create their own opportunities. Or you could say educators allow educators. Okay. All right. Do we have any, any comments? Uh, you seconded that. So I, the, it still stands. I heard you say you like it. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, you are right. But we got it. All right. I see no other comments. So we are going to move to a vote on a, on the substitute motion. Uh, all in favor? The underlying, mo this is a substitute, right, correct, And but this is a substitute, not an amendment. Um, I don't have one of those sheets today. Do you have another one? Oh, right here. All right, Member Bogus. Yes. 
Member Booth? No. Member Klein? Yes. Member Davis? No. Vice Chair Earl? No. Member Green? Member Hymas? No. Member Carey has not joined us online yet, I don't believe. Member Lear? No. Member Norton? No. Member Real? No. Member Strait? No. Member Wood? No. Member Moss? No. And I'm a no. It's got too many words for me. What is it? Ten opposed, three in favor. That motion fails to carry. Let's go back to the original motion. Oh, and then I think Brent is on. Yeah. Okay. Just um, to bring us back to the same place, that the board approve the following mission statement to open doors of opportunity for all Utah children. Member Strait. So I guess I, uh, I, I hear what board member Wood is saying and what uh, Vice Chair, I went just went blank. Girl. Anyway, uh, I, I found this quote that really kind of ties in with the, this Doors theme, and it's a quote by George Washington Carver, who was born a slave and and uh, actually started a university. Anyway, uh, education is the key that unlocks the golden door to freedom. So if we're trying to find that, that key idea that really uh, puts us in alignment, I think maybe that helps. I don't know how to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's put above the vision because I, I like the vision as presented here. I, it's the same theme. But anyway, I just found that quote and thought it was, it, it gave that broader world uh, competitive theme to it. Okay. All right, uh, Member Davis. Um, can I just jump in for a second? Yeah. Can yes. you just read the votes from the last from the last motion, and and the ones going forward so that the public listening can hear who okay. voted? Are, are you not able to hear the votes? Well, I know there are people listening online that couldn't tell who voted for okay. that last okay. one and who didn't. Thanks, Member Klein. Uh, the last vote was 10, in, uh, 10 opposed, 3 in favor. The 3 in favor were Bogus, Klein, and Green. Thank you. Yes. Chair Hart, I have a motion um, to substitute. Hold on, I lost I my place. On. Yeah, so. I, I called her before she did a point of order. Or, uh, yeah. And I'm not subbing or anything, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to speak to the motion. Sure. I, I like the language. I like the shortness of it. But I, I can also really appreciate what Member Bogus is saying, and I think it's something that we've had to grapple with, and I think it's something that could change as these potential convenings happen in the future with the legislature and the governor's office and everybody. Because we really are and have in the past, and the legislature in code also, it's like there's this kind of like back and forth thing between the the, the vision and the mission for the, the system-wide state of education and then also for us as a board or agency. Mm -hmm. and, and there's kind of this, been a bit of conflating across all, all of the parts. So I hear this too, and I just don't know how to, resolve that other than to move forward the best way that that I feel like we can now and then understanding this all may actually change <laughs> after those potential convenings happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I also do like the language of creating conditions that member client mm -hmm. imposed. So I, I don't know if that is put somewhere down in the vision. Um, you know, creating conditions for academic and organizational excellence for the Utah public education system, because that speaks more towards the, the vision is to do this. Um, Can you but, repeat what you just said? Um, yes, it, it would come in the vision part, but I think we're only voting on the, the I know, mission I just right now. To... But it was 
it would be creating conditions for academic and organizational excellence for the Utah public education system. Okay. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the sort of quandary that all of us have dealt with mm -hmm. historically and still kind of are grappling with now. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think those comments are spot on. Uh, Member Bogus, your light's on. Yes, ma'am. So I would make a motion to substitute based on inspiration from uh, Mr. Strait over there. Um, I would move that the board approve the following mission statement. If we're going in this realm, that we educate for freedom, end quote. Hold on just a minute. For number okay, say that again. Oh, um, whoever is doing that, Elise is doing a great job printing every word. Just quote, educate for freedom, end quote. So not that we. Yeah, not that we. Yeah, capital E on educate, capital... F on freedom, and our mission state would be, quote, educate for freedom. Yeah. And if I have a second, then I'll speak to the motion. Do we have a second? Uh, uh, Member Green has seconded. Okay. So <clears throat> I just really, like, I really liked what Member Strait said, and could you read that quotation again, Member Strait, as part of me speaking to my motion? We'll just pretend I'm speaking. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it, it was very much so. It was just very inspiring, and I think if this is the direction that the, the board wants to head, I, I like, um, you know, it's simple. It's, um, there's an implied we, there's an implied subject there, so it technically is a complete sentence. Um, it, the quote that, that Member Strait gave was, education is the key that unlocks the golden door to freedom by George Washington Carver. And, um, and so with that as inspiration, I would move the following language, short, sweet, and inspirational. Okay, thank you. Member Green? Um, well, member Strait, you just started something kind of cool here because while she came up with that, I was on Google looking at um, other quotes. And I mean, I've got over 150 quotes right now from founding fathers that align with um, just education, character, um, justice, uh, the building of of a quality life for for people, which I think is the foundation of everything we know and and believe, and I think that we continue to foster and hope for for the future generations. So, I think this has some potential. Are you adding something to this, or are you speaking no, in favor? I'm speaking in favor. Okay. Uh, are there any other comments before we, uh, Member Davis? Yeah. I, I like this too. I, I like the other one better simply because I think we educate for a lot of things and freedom is one of them. But I really do like this too. Which other one were you referring to? The, one the main motion on the table, which is to open, um, open op doors of opportunity for all Utah children. Okay. All right. So I, I have. You have. Okay. Now. We are landing this plane in nine minutes. <laughs> so speak now Okay, I and speak quickly. Just, I, I mean, it's kind of combining the two. And I actually came up with something, too, but I, I, just, I, I didn't continue with it but, off of your, your thing. But, um, and what if it's educate for opportunities? Something, the com combination of the two. I'm just throwing it out there, see if it feels like anything. <laughs> Because it is that, that okay. we're educating for opportunities. But All right. Just throwing that out there, not hearing anything. So okay. Okay. I don't think it's a motion. I think it's an idea. And if somebody wanted to, idea, it was a yeah, it was a floated idea. Right. I understand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that fish died. Um, 
So we are back to the board approved the following mission statement, educate for freedom. Um, let's vote. Mem uh, Chair Moss. I'm a no. I like it, but no. Wood? Yes. Member Strait? I'll come I'll come back to you, Member Real. No. Member Norton? No. Member Lear? No. Member Carey? Uh Member Hymas? No. Member Green? Yes. Member Earl? Uh, uh, yes. Member Davis? No. Member Klein? Yes. Member Booth? No. Member Bogus? Yes. Member Strait? Member Strait? What's the vote at? Your vote counts. I'm a no. You're off the hook. We're back to the original motion. <laughs> um, uh, the vote, uh, yes, I need to read that into record. I know, but I'm buying you some more time. Let's go. Your mic is not on. Please turn your mic on. I'm going to go no for now. Okay. Thank you. That makes it. Can you speak? I am. I am. Hold on. That's nine no's, five yeses. The five yeses are Bogus, Klein, uh, Earl, Green, and Wood. We're back to the original. Let's go ahead and take a vote on the original so we know where we're at with that one. Unless. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. We can do whatever we need to do. I am not trying to rush you. In the words of a very, very wise man, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. All right. Give you enough thinking time. So can I take a point of personal privilege? You can. That has actually made its way into the educational sphere. Almost every conversation I have, Superintendent Jones is quoted. And as he should be. He should be because it's it's this sm slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And anyhow, so cheers to Superintendent Jones. Yes. And is the juice worth the squeeze? All right. So we are back. Um, we are back to um, the original motion. I'd like to for us to consider this to kind of figure out where we're at with this. Um, to open doors of opportunity for all Utah children. Okay, um, let's go ahead and vote on this. Unless somebody wants to be this to be a jumping off point, can you see where we could marry the idea? I, I'm not really marrying anything. I'm marinating. <laughs> I have an idea. I not an idea, but I would instead of the to open okay. doors. I'm just I'm making a suggestion. We'll see if someone right. seconds it. Um, creating conditions of opportunity for all children. But we can open doors, but because we really create the conditions for that. But anyways, throw that I, out there. I guess theoretically my thing is opening doors is creating conditions. It's just a more metaphorical way of saying okay. it. That's just. Well, did I get a second or not? No. Um, okay. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she can't. I'm just saying, I, I think there's, we've got to preserve some 
catchiness, some, um, and and to be absolutely correct, we're not exactly opening doors. We're kind of creating conditions to open doors, and doors are metaphorical. But it there's if there's no um, catchiness or cleverness to it, we don't have any chance of it being. And this is this is pretty bland. So I think that I, and to add more words is I think just. Do you want to keep your motion out there, or no, do you want to? I think this is approved. Okay, but well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna vote on the original, please. Can, okay. Yes. Is it all right? It chairs. Okay. It was a, just okay. fine. Okay. So Frederick Douglass, when he learned to read. He said in his autobiography that at that moment he was no longer satisfied to be a slave. So going back to the idea we had before, because I, I did like that idea that education, even today, leads to greater freedom. Leads to, and another word for freedom is opportunity. And maybe this isn't better, but to open doors of freedom for all Utah children. It makes a little more vague in its educational reference, I think, and so I'm a little worried about that. But that idea that education makes us free is very powerful for me. Anyway. In the what? Okay, so we can't okay. talk off mic, so I hear you. Thank you for the the comment we are back to our vote i thought he made a motion no. is that a motion or a okay well it uh, caught mine so if you make the motion i will second it I, uh, Okay, stop. You, you can't have those conversations off mic. That You can't do that. We are going to move forward on a vote. Yes, we can. We'll go back to the drawing board. Um, did I start with? Okay, Member Boggess. We're voting on the main motion. Yeah, I would go back to that is not the proper role of government. So, so no. No. Okay. Member Booth? Yes. Member Klein? And please speak into your mic so people can hear. No. Member Davis? Yes. Vice Chair Earl? I'm going to say yes. I, Carol kind of convinced me here. We do have a, a metaphor or a visual we're, we're working with. Member Green? Yes. I'm a yes. Member Hymas? Yes. Member, uh, Member Lear? Yes. Member Norton? Yes. Member Real? Yes. Member Strait? Yes. Member Wood? Yes. Member Moss? Yes. Okay. 12 in favor, two opposed. The two opposed would be Boggess and Klein. I'm proud of this bunch. I'm proud of you because you came to a conclusion. Um, you considered everybody's feedback. Um, you looked for the place that everybody converged. Um, we didn't go all the way down the the commercialized road, but we did include a metaphor that that people can picture, and um, we laid a foundation for important values. Um, we opened the door to include things that matter to us later. So, congratulations, good job. Next up. Okay, I think we got to go to the the vision. Am I correct. <laughs> using the terms correctly? And the vision is, no. Quick note. Can I, I, I really think that was that the out. vision, this and then what we do and how we mission. do it. We just, we just did the Point of order. Yeah? 
We're supposed to be 40 minutes ago starting a data performance measures presentation. Yeah, and yeah, that's... We're adjusting. We're adjusting on the fly. Okay, so <clears throat> just so we can adjust every day on the fly? Yeah. Okay. We have every meeting so I understand far. that, but as, as we continue to have these conversations, I'm going to continue to hold you to a set standard. <laughs> so as long as we're being flexible, we're always flexible. Well, we're flexible today. So well, we were um, eight o'clock, ten listen. o'clock flexible last night. Um, so, what did you? Chip? Well, just to throw you out, I mean, speak to okay. your mic and turn it on. So, um, I, I think as we've framed it up, there have been proposals for bullet points or sub items under the mission, right, and also under the vision. I guess maybe just a question for the body. We've we've framed the top line mission statement. That was the mission statement. Yeah. Correct. That's okay. How you were framing Not the vision. It. Okay. And, and, and one question is, do we want to try to frame in the top line vision statement and then come back to the bullet points? I mean, to Member Boggs's point, we do have a presentation on performance measures that's important. Chief of Staff Young is prepared. That leads us to our next step as we talk about goals and we get specific. And so I think it's important that we hear from her and we want to get there. We probably have time for maybe one more yeah. item. And do we want to try to frame in the top line vision statement and then come back to the bullet points? Do we want to look at the elements of the mission statement? I'm just throwing it out there. I think the body's had some good interaction here. Th those are a couple of options we have to try to finish some work today and then come back the next time. What's the most urgent thing to try to finish today before we go into the performance That's measures it. and then bring it back? Mots, right? I have a Thank you. Hold, hold on. We had uh, Member Hymas and then Member Klein. Just just my two cents. I, I think if, if we're willing and have time, I'd love to tackle the top line vision statement and okay. then go to the bullets. Thank you. Member Klein? Yes, I just have a motion for okay. that. Okay. It would, it would be foster freedom through foundational academic. Foster freedom through foundational through foundational academics. academics. Yep. Uh, the alliteration is nice. I thought you were going to say academic excellence, but you went with the alliteration. Yeah, yeah foster freedom. Yeah. All right. Do we have a second on that? So this is just let me be. This would be a. Vision. This is what we've got our aspirational. Now we have. Am I doing this right? I know what it says there, but we're not doing that. Oh, okay. I, We've decided I, to go away from that. Okay. I, that's what I think. Am I right in saying that? Do we have a second? Member Green is a second. Because this is now what the, this is the more the media of what we're responsible for. Am I saying this right? That's why I was telling you. The mission is like the meat. The vision is like the sauce for the meat. Which that's what I was saying. And that's that's why I said I think we've got the term. We like what we just passed we should have been should be the, vision. the vision. Well, we can, we can add um, first at the end. Can I read this? We have a mixing of definitions. Uh, okay. Member Davis? I don't know. I mean, Google font of all knowledge. I'm just reading. This is like the three parts of a mission statement, but the mission statement says the purpose, an explanation of the organization's reason for existing to open doors of opportunity. Then vision, a description of what the organization wants to achieve in the future to create conditions for academic and organizational right? excellence. And then it says values a list of the core values that guide the organization's behavior and decisions. This is, I don't, the first, the purpose, an explanation of the organization's reason for existing. This has three parts of a mission. Three parts of the, the whole, this would sort of be considered the whole mission statement, I guess. The purpose, an, an explanation of the organization's reason for existing, vision, colon, a description of what the organization wants to achieve in the future, and values, a list of the core values that guide the organization's behavior and decisions. But maybe you could Google 
click on 10 different sites and they would say different definitions for the mission and the vision and how that should roll so out. So we just have to decide what we, ours is yes. going to be. I, I, from what I understood from our discussion earlier, and that's why I kept arguing which, which way is it, which way is it, we just did aspirational and we titled it mission. Am I correct in saying that? Well, no. I mean, I don't know. There's examples here, and Jim gave us lots of examples. This is Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to new, new renewable energy. It's usually like a two statement, to and quick and short, so you can remember it. And that's so. What we're going to do is we're going to go with that as the mission. Then we're going to we're just going to decide that's what we yeah. consider the aspirational. Now let's consider the what you call it. The, the well, we no. did the flighty. Now we need to do the meet. Meet. That's backwards. That's, that's it depends on where you're reading the definition from, and I think that's why we're trying to get on the same page. What I'm saying is we create. Can I throw one more and wrench? And this in? says for whom, also. Can, can I throw one, one more wrench in? Sometimes yes. you'll, sometimes there is you'll a motion see, on the floor. Sometimes you'll see mission and vision, and right. it will just have everything. And, and, and. Member Klein, it is still on the floor. The question is not, it's not being debated, the, the content. Right now, what, what we're trying to clarify is what is it that we're doing next? Is it, the, is it a mission? Is it a vision? I'm somewhat concerned that we're hung up on that. And rather than think about the label, let's get to the idea. So our idea that we passed, which I've already forgotten, was that was to open doors. That's aspirational. And it says who? Utah's, all of Utah's children. So we're there. Now the other one, regardless of what we name it, needs to be the meat. And what Member Klein has put on the floor is, sorry, I can't see that far, of foster freedom through foundational academics first. So let's stop worrying about whether it's a mission or vision. Let's just get the content down. Okay, this is fun. Go ahead. The one flows together. Correct. The opportunities. Uh, open doors of opportunity for children. And you could, I mean, if you were to extend it as a full sentence, it could be fought by fostering freedom through foundational academics first. So it's completion of, if they flow one from the other. They do. And then you can get into the more detailed um, bullet points after that. And you can get into the, into the values as well. So it does have a flow to it, regardless of mission vision so this is this is um it's on the floor it's been seconded any comments I have a motion to amend a motion to amend i'd like to amend by uh just changing the end from foster freedom through academic and organizational excellence for the utah public education system oh i like Okay, uh, we now have an amendment. Do we have a second to that amendment? The uh, a second from Member um, Green. Booth. Booth Green. Oh, all right. The the amend, the amendment on the floor is foster freedom through academic and organizational excellence for the Utah public education system. I would like to comment. Okay, hold on. We got a motion in a second. We're just waiting for it to get typed. All right. Is that accurate? Okay. Would you like to speak to your motion? I love the introduction to the freedom. I, I thought about, you know, Member Bogus. I think that it, ultimately that's what we want, the freedom for them to be able to go and do, whether it's service, work, college, whatever. I love that. Um, but I think we come back to what our role is, and our role is that academic and organizational excellence. 
I'm, I'm impressed how that blends some multiple ideas. Thank you. Um, member Lear, and then Bogus. Would you, I, I don't mind this. I, first of all, I, I, I'm wrestling with the organizational work word because it feels too, too functional, too business-like. So I'm not crazy about that word. Maybe not a deal killer, but would you accept just in for the in, if in the interest of streamlining for Utah Public Education? So get rid of the and system, so it doesn't sound so clunky. So maybe somebody can help me with figure out organizational through academic because I realize we've got some organizational responsibilities as the board um, it just feels so um, I don't know uninspired I yeah so we have I've had my sorry, hand raised just, and I had the same question yes what we have is Bogus, then Klein and then real Your light's not on. Can I just conclude my statement with my ponderings with what even does organizational excellence mean? Does it mean we do good PowerPoints? Does it mean we Would have good flow, good organizational charts? Does it mean we we clearly are, don't treat our staff as well as we should? So not doing that as well. Member okay. uh, Bogus. So actually, uh, Member Lear actually asked my question, but I'm wondering if if we're going to put this in here, I understand academic excellence. Um, I think it could be better defined, but if we're going to pass this, I think we need a rubric for organizational excellence because it's it's just ill-defined. It's like this like thing, and I, I don't I don't know. And I know, Jenny, you're pointing to this, but that's actually not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like... Cotter, organizational excellence, what, what that looks like and how that infrastructure ebbs and flows together to produce what we want it to produce. I, I, I don't know. I just... I, well, can I amend the amendment? Um, Let's get some more comments. I've, I, didn't, I failed to notice the people online, and I, they've been waiting. So hold on. We'll come back to you. Member Klein. I can amend the amendment. You can, hold on. I just wanted a few more comments um, first. You're in line for that. Okay. So, um, Remember? yeah, foundational is super important, uh, as is the word first, because it provides that laser focus. It, it anchors us in in academics, not a broad, some broad interpretation of academic excellence, which could mean anything to anyone. But if we focus on foundational academics first. Um, that's that's key for what happens um, beyond USB on what we do. Organizational excellence is an entirely different beast, uh, but I think the ultimate goal of the public education system should be to uh, focus, laser focus on foundational academics first. Okay. So I would uh, speak against taking out the words foundational and first so that we don't lose that focus to some broad, um, ambiguous interpretation of academic excellence. Okay. Um, Member Real, you're, you're good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I had the same comment as Member Bogus and Member Lear. I, I have a hard time defining what organizational excellence um, is however, I I do think there is a way, and I see clear definition of academic excellence, but organizational doesn't work for me. Okay, and now we're back to Bogus. You had an amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Thanks. Um, the organizational excellence comes will come in the pillars that are below. They come with management of taxpayer funds, the information systems that we work on, the policy we create the internal operations, all of our over fiscal management and oversight. I mean, we do so much here for organizational excellence. 
Academic standards is the center pillar and it's the first listed in the vision. It should take the place of predominance. But we have both, and I'll quickly say, not to bring religion into this, but I was reading the BYU magazine the other day and the president of the magazine was saying, we have room for a spiritual focus in addition to our main academic existence and drivers. And they have room for both. And we here have room and must have room for both because we, in fact, do much of both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you do. You do. Sorry. I, your light doesn't come on. So go ahead. I want to kick it off. And we're still holding for Bogus to make yes. her amendment. But I would argue the same thing that organization, we start, we start from the aspirational. Now we're down to where the meat of what happens and what we're responsible for. So we're getting back to that. So I do think organization speaks to that. It's got to be academic and organizational because we are now that those expectations of excellence are there. And then it, the reason why I'm pointing to that is because I think this has to be part of the vision. We just haven't, or the, whatever we want to call it, that we just haven't voted on those components yet, but those are the things we do. I think it has to be, it's part of that. So. Anyways, okay. Thank you. M uh, Member Bogus, you've waited patiently. You've got an amendment? Uh, yes, I would, I would move to amend the amendment by having it state that we foster freedom through foundational academics in Utah public education. Okay, I, I was following, but then I think you, so you added foundational academics, so there should be an S on academics, and then you dropped organizational excellence? Yeah. Did I hear yes, you drop so that? To foster freedom through foundational, uh, can we get, go back in, because it's a hybrid. So I need to see Natalie's again, please. To foster freedom through foundational academics in Utah public education. All right, do we have a second on that? Okay. Um, I will second it if we can add first back in there. Um, that's not in the motion, but we got a, we got a- Got a friendly amendment. Well, we got a second from member green. Um, so do you want it in there or do you not? No. Uh, Okay, so the original motion, the motion that Member Bogus made is to amend the statement to foster freedom through foundational academics in Utah public education. Let's vote. Uh, Member Wood. Just push it. Oh, sorry, we got to take people off. No. Member Strait? No. Member Real? No. Member Norton? No. Member Lear? No. Member Hymas? No. Member Green? Yes. Member Earl? No. Member Davis? No. Member Klein? Yes. Member Booth? No. Member Bogus? Yes. 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 That's 10 no's. Three yeas. The yeas are Klein, Green, and Bogus. Okay, we are going to end in two minutes. We are going to go back to the motion that we had. Okay, hold, hold on. So that did not pass. So what we're back to is Member Wood's motion to amend, correct? All right, I just want to make sure we're not losing our place. Foster freedom through academic and organizational excellence for Utah public education. Uh, Member Strait. So I think where we're getting stuck a little bit is on that word organizational. Uh, 
I'd like to go back to our constitutional mandate oh. uh, of general support and supervision. I'm not sure, and I've come up with several different words. I thought about using that phraseology in some way, but I, it's a little awkward right now. Uh, we could go with administrative excellence, but then I worry about that. That's a contradiction in terms. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Enough well, editorial. So, yeah. but support and supervision. So, academic support and supervision. But then I'm not sure that says. I've got an idea, Brad. What the Constitution really means. I, I'm just trying to tie it together because there seems to be a lot of negativity around that word organizational. I think we, well, I think we are circling the landing. I've got one. I think our landing gear is down and we're about to land. One wheel. And we are going to end because I'm going to make a motion to, to end this item in just a second. So, a uh, member Lear. Floating thing. I, through acad see what here's what bugs me through acad because you can't have organizational e excellence again it's a contradiction in terms so what about academic excellence and organizational support academic excellence organizational i i think an organizational organization can be to be excellent yeah but what they do is just I don't know. Okay, I just floating that out there, because I didn't like that. Yeah, I like so. academic excellence. I get that that's the phrase of the year. So okay, but organizational excellence just doesn't feel good. So I was thinking another word go with organizational. But let's move on and Would, come back. Then, um, member Hymas. Yeah, can. We call the question on this and vote. I, yeah, I, I think the lights closed out, so let's vote. Uh, Can I, I, I would, I would uh, like to make an amendment. I, I, I call the we've question. We've already called the question. Okay. So. Okay, I didn't hear that. Yeah, hold, hold on that thought. We're gonna, no, because that was the only light, but she's gonna hold. Um, member, uh, member Wood. Yes. Member Strait? Yes. Member Real? Member Real? No. No. Member Norton? Yes. Member Lear? No. Member Hymas? Yes. Member Green? Member Earl? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. Member Klein? No. Member Booth? Yes. Member Bogus? No. Okay. All right, I'm going to call this one out. It's closer. Uh, it's eight yeses, five noes, so that passes. The yeses are Booth, Davis, Earl. Um, any order? I think it fails. It doesn't. It need two thirds vote. I don't. No. It's a. It's previous question. It requires two oh, thirds. Oh no! There wasn't anyone else that had hands up. Did you? Do, are you? Are you objecting to that? Would you like a vote to call the question? It is, yes, I, okay. there, Fair. it requires and two thirds for, that, to right. go previous question, which is what this is. Okay, we will vote on calling the question. Calling the question vote. Being clear, this is calling the question. Member Bogus. No. Member Booth. We're calling, so the, the question was because called. The question was called. We didn't vote because there wasn't anyone left to speak. Okay. And I did. I I wanted to make a motion, which means, in order for to call the question to to pass, it needs two thirds because I, and, I still and I, that, I had a motion. Okay, and that, that was I, in my 
Understood. Um, and I apologize, Member Klein. I thought you withdrew that when you heard that the question had been called. So we went back and we are now voting on calling the question. So the question, what you're voting on is calling the question. Member Boggess. No. Member Booth. Yes. Member Klein. No. Member Davis. Yes. Vice Chair Earl. Yes. Member Green. No. Uh, Member Hymas. Yes. Member Lear. Yes. Member Norton. Yes. Member Real. Yes. Member Strait. Yes. Member Wood. Yes. Member Moss. Uh, you weren't. He is a word. Okay. Thanks. And I am a yes, so. so that's 10 yeses. That passes. We will now officially vote on the motion. Uh, we've called the question. This is a vote on the motion. The motion is to amend the vision state, the statement to foster freedom through academic and organizational excellence for Utah public education. Um. To a point of clarification. Yes. If this fails, then we move to Member Klein's initial no. motion. No. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I'm sorry. And then if that Is fails, amend. what happens? We're left without anything. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, what, one, more, one more thought about it just a, a maybe perhaps a friendly instead of for Utah public education the question it really has been called oh okay yeah member wood yes member straight yes member real no member norton no member lear Member Hymas? Yes. Mm, uh, Member Green? No. Yes. Member Earl? Yes. Member Davis? How many are we at? Sounds weird, but I'm not. I haven't. Yes, I guess. <coughs> Ow. Member Klein? No. Member Booth? Yes. Member Boggess? No. I'm a yes. Did you get me? Did you get me? Oh, did, were you, are you comfortable voting? Uh, you just came in. Would you like uh, to vote yes or no? I'm a no, I, it, only because it sounds to me like another mission. So I'm okay, a no. you're a no? Okay. Okay. That motion fails because it's tied. Our time is up. We need to move to the next item. We will need to. Uh, we have to vote on the underlying motion. Yeah, we have an underlying motion. So I guess it's. I said we were cutting off. We are cutting off. All right. All right. The motion on the floor. Yes. Why is that the underlining motion and not the very first one? Member Hymas moved the one on this paper. I never got to move it. Yeah. We moved. We did. We did the mission. We're talking vision. Yeah. And I never. You got, never moved. I never got to move it. Okay. Is that clarified? All right. What we're voting on now is that the board approve the following vision yeah. statement: foster freedom through foundational academics first. Okay. This is what you're voting on. Um, I'll start. I'll start with Member Bogus. Yes. Member Booth. No. Member Klein. Yes. Member Davis. No. Uh, Member Earl. No. Member Green. Uh, Member Hymas. No. Member Lear. Member Norton? No. Member Real? 
No. Member Strait? No. Member Wood? No. Member Moss? No. Ten no's, three yeses. The yeses are Bogus, Klein, and Green. That motion fails. We are moving on to our next agenda item. Can I introduce briefly and then turn it to Superintendent Dixon? So just, just for background, um, we have Superintendent Dixon, Chief of Staff Young here, to, to share with us an update on performance measures. Um, this is not necessarily a specific part of this process. We are not here to review and vote or tweak these performance measures. But we felt it was a piece of the process of looking where we are and where we've come and how we're doing that fit in well with the process we're in of figuring out what we're all about. What's our mission vision? Where do we want to go? What are our goals? So I just want to make really that part very clear. It's here because there's a conceptual tie between these performance measures and what we're doing, but we're not here to review, vote, tweak. So the legislature orders us to do certain things, performance measures, track them. And as Superintendent Dixon, Chief Sight Young will explain, a lot of work has gone on to re improving and revising those performance measures. And we'll be presenting those to the legislature as directed by the legislature. So that process is housed there. The reason it's here, again, we're going to hear some good things. I think a lot of great work that's been done in helping us assess how we're doing. And again, that's just a conceptual tie to this work. So I just want to set the table, make that clear. We're not voting here. We're not going to vote another time on whether to tweak these performance measures. They come down from the legislature. But I think it's very informative, and so I greatly appreciate the work's been done. As to the Chief of Staff Young kind of showed me, and I think others have had these conversations. A lot of things have been done to clarify, categorize, and in my view, shift toward a better understanding of outcomes. And, and so that's what I think is super helpful as we sort of do this work of strategic planning. So I hope that makes sense. Greatly appreciate all the work that's gone into this and we look forward to hearing from it. Again, I think just our, the, the, the hat that we're wearing is, okay, how do I take this information and infuse it into this strategic planning process? That, that for me is the connection, but Superintendent Dixon might say it better. Thank you for, for both being here and for all the work. Thank you, Chair Moss. You actually teed that up very well. I have. Yeah, I did a great job. Thank you for that. Um, we have about 30 slides that we're going to go through with you. And we don't intend to be PowerPointless, but we will use the slide deck just as a way for you to track where we're at. So uh, Kelsey is driving for us, right? So we uh, just the four major components that we want to go over today really will kind of review, as Chair Moss indicated, just the state performance measures. We want to give you a little bit of background about the why, where they're coming from, and what we need to do going forward. You've seen the reciprocal performance framework. That's been in front of you, and we've shared that with the legislature, and they've signed off on it. So that's been the foundational piece that we'll get into a little bit. Um, we'll talk about draft performance measures for K-12 education, and you uh, have those in a compendium that uh, Chief of Staff Young will, will briefly uh, detail a little bit for you. And we want to make sure you understand the timeline, where, where we headed. And so with that, uh, we'll just get into the meat of it. And I, I know this is passive for a bit. If you have questions, we're um, happy to answer those at the end. But I would imagine that some of, you, some of the questions you might have you will see embedded in the slide deck as we progress. So if you have, we'll stop at the end and then just make sure we have a lot of time for you to discuss, okay? So that's where we're headed. Now, the best part of all of this, in my opinion, is that there's no new data collection from our schools. Trying to be very mindful of the hard work that's, that has been done around um, reports and requirements uh, work group and we try to remind ourselves of that as well as the legislature. Anytime anybody wants a survey or new data, it's more data collection. So the performance measures are based on the data we already have to make sure that we're not burdening our LEAs. All right, so what is this, what is this all about? Well, 
We've been working really closely, as Chair Moss stated, with legislative fiscal analysts with the legislature in trying to help them, help us, help them <laughs> in this reciprocal way of making sure that we have a systems approach to performance measures. And we'll get into that a little bit more, but we wanna make sure that our taxpayers have transparency, that our policymakers uh, have transparency and that we're, we're working together for one uh, measurement system for the entire education system. So what are performance measures? Well, they're developed and approved, as Chair Moss indicated, by the legislative and executive branch. So unlike some of the things that we've put forward in the strategic plan and other places where you spend a lot of time on numbers and words and trying to get these right, we are taking an opportunity to inform the legislature and not necessarily um, uh, do something apart from them, but we don't want it to be done to us either. So this is an opportunity to inform their work. The focus has, has um, shifted from a lot of combination of elements. I remember years ago when I first heard about, we, we were tasked with performance measures, but they didn't really allow us to give input. So they were done to us. And they were just like this amalgam of everything. There were, um, you know, there were inputs and there were um, outputs and there were like all sorts of things uh, related to taxpayer dollars. But we didn't really have a way to say, what's the ROI? What's the return on the investment? What kind of outcomes are we getting? So they were sort of random and we were very frustrated by being held to a set of standards that really didn't make sense for the system. <clears throat> and there are two types of performance measures, but we're going to focus on the line items. So these are the things that come to us. These are the long-term measures. And these are line items that we are given from the legislature. Um, and so that's what we will be detailing. All right, um, so what does it look like for K-12 education? I guess I could put on my glasses, that might help. I keep trying to look younger, even though I'm not feeling younger today. Um, so to really assess the progress of our system to, towards our vision, right now we've been, this is sort of this historical look, where we're, we're, it's historical, but this is where we're at right now and what we're trying to improve on. So when we talk about measures, I know it can get very confusing because, and by confusing, I mean to everyone, the field, taxpayers, because they hear about measures and we, we have a set, they're in an education elevated. Um, and these are the things that were set by our board years ago and that were presented and accepted by the legislature. And remember, we started with 100% of our students being proficient, 100% of our students graduating, and then we, did some metrics and or created some metrics that said we'll do X by this time. Then we also had our strategic goals and strategies and and that's what I just reported to you yesterday. We have action steps. So we're coming to you and saying, here's how we're getting to these goals and here are the action steps that show we're meeting these strategies or not. And we hold ourselves accountable. We use heat maps. We use all sorts of things that we put before you. And then Thirdly, these line item measures that show progress towards specific budget line items. But when you put all those together, it feels a little bit like somebody's kitchen drawer <laughs> where you have your favorite utensils and you're trying to find that one utensil sometimes that will get you exactly what you need. So uh, again, trying to take all of those elements and then um, create something better. So our current challenges, as I've mentioned, just using inputs and activities and outputs and outcomes. And sometimes when those are glossy, people clap and say, that sounds really great, but you don't really know if it's making a difference. And we want measures that, that clearly articulate a difference. We also haven't always had a clear articulation with our functions, just as you were struggling with mission and vision. And I love the conversation. It was nice to sit back and listen to it because that is a struggle. Like, what is our role? What do we do? How, how do we measure what we do in terms of how it impacts the system? And then what is the role of the LEAs as well in all of this? Like how, what is their role? It was kind of clear specifically to their LEA, but then how is this a chain of how they impact the entire system based on the outcomes that they get in, in each of their LEAs? So you can see overall, this whole system that we have just lacks coherence and therefore we have truly been working on this over the course of a couple of years to get this right, just to make sure everybody's in agreement and at the table. 
So here are the actions that we've taken. And again, this has been over at least the last two years, and I feel like we've been talking about it for a long time, but we've taken these actions. So we sat down with all of our performance measures, and remember that we had over 180 existing performance measures. Who can keep track of that? Remember, hi, Miss, would you like to keep track of all that in your school? That's a, that's a lot. And um, so we found that it was just um, so all over the place that we said, let's review all of these. So let's look at these that include our strategic plan, school improvement plan data sets, all of the data that we have, and then consider what is working and what isn't and what could be improved upon. And then this was, we did this in order to then enter into the design phase. Like what is our current state? Where are we trying to go? We also looked at some other states and there were a few that had performance measures out there. Specifically, we looked at Texas, Arizona, and Florida. And the majority of these states use a pretty simple performance measure system, much like what we have in ed education elevated, just some real standardized profic proficiency measures, graduation, graduation rates, et cetera. And then we also looked at some research on policy recommendations. For example, we looked at um, American Enterprise Institute. I know that's uh, one of Chair Moss's favorites, and we appreciate uh, an article that they put out that was called The Numbers We Need, How the Right Metrics Could Improve K-12 Education. So those are some of the kinds of things that we look at to say, what are we not thinking of? How do we think about this differently? So um, I'm going to transition to Chief of Staff Young and just take us back a little bit to this performance framework and including uh, timelines for progress. So it, she's gonna drill down a little bit on what I just said. Thank you. So Chief of Staff, Sarah Young, um, if we can have the next slide, Kelsey. So um, this progress towards this project actually even predates my time as Chief of Staff here at the agency. Um, so we reach all the way back to August of 2019, um, which was when the Legislative Audit Subcommittee prioritized the audit of performance outcomes for K-12 education. Um, so many of you may be familiar with um, the audits that have been coming out of OLAG specific to looking at different aspects of K-12. And this was really really kind of the kickoff of many of those audits, and their primary focus was trying to have a better understanding of those performance outcomes. In 2019, um, uh, we also in December saw a performance audit on public education reporting requirements, and this was a key function within our overall design phase um, because there was really a focus on what is the agency doing to coordinate data gathering um, and how can that increase efficiencies and decrease duplicative efforts. So that really fed into kind of an overview from our agency standpoint of what are we doing um, and kind Kind of prompting us to look at our existing systems and structures. The, that particular audit also did call out um, a desire for public education um, to look at school performance um, in addition to looking at school employment and trying to get a better sense of some of those metrics that may not always be um, as publicly promoted um, at the local level or the state level, but is a data set that we have access to. In 2020, we moved into a phase where, um, as per legislative requirements, um, the agency does present on performance measure outcomes each year. In the October 2020 presentation to public ed appropriations, um, the agency at that time asked for a change um, in multiple measures, um, so 12 of, of the 63 that were in line item. That really caused a conversation within in that legislative setting about, well, wait, if we're changing 12 of these, how good are these measures? And are they really getting at what we're seeking as legislators? Um, at the time, USBE staff also expressed a desire to be able to make some modifications and do a revision that ultimately would hopefully be more comprehensive in meeting the needs of our legislative leaders. In August of 2021, we saw more um, performance audits coming out. Um, 
specific to the Utah State Board of Education's internal governance. Um, this particular audit stated that USBE should improve accountability for internal operations and streamline its reporting metrics. Um, they also kind of referenced some of the work around the strategic plan and looking at outcomes within that space, um, as well as aligning to the state superintendent report, which was called out as another way that we are reporting um, and that those pieces may not always fit together. In addition to 2021, we then moved into 22-23, which is where we started to have kind of design outcomes um, and drafts that we were presenting to our legislative leaders. So we did present at Public Ed Appropriations uh, in, on February 4th, 2022, this initial framework. The goal of that framework was really to seek feedback from the legislators on whether or not this type of framework and design would meet their needs. And so they gave positive feedback and we did move forward. Um, we did bring the framework back again in August of 2022 um, to be able to review some of the changes we made based on feedback and ultimately again in February of 2023 um, as part of the session we did present at PEA and that's also where we introduced some of the new components related to domains. Coming from that we gave uh, the exact same presentation in March of 2023 in Finance Committee um, that was presented um, just to, again, make sure that there was awareness here at the agency of kind of our progression related to this work um, before we then moved into a heavier design phase with our staff. Um, you'll see that there's some future dates coming, but Superintendent Dixon will cover that near the end of this presentation. So Superintendent, I'll turn it back to you to give the overview of the framework. Yep, I'm, I'm red, thank you. Thank you, um, Sarah. So just taking us back, you've again, you've seen this, but I want to reground us in this reciprocal, that is such a hard word to say on a Friday afternoon, reciprocal uh, framework. And you'll recall, as I mentioned earlier, that the legislative body that looked at this and approved it, uh, public ed approach, they were very supportive of this framework. And uh, I'll just go through each component a little bit. When you look to the left in that first square on statewide outcomes and indicators, this is the piece where we're measuring progress on our big ideas, our big North Star, the whole population results. This kind of takes us back to education elevated and also brings in some new data sets. So it, it, we still look at proficiency and, and graduation rates and those things that we generally judge a whole population success on, uh, but, but adding in, uh, additional elements that we'll talk about in a minute. And then um, after, as you look at system opportunity indicators, that's really where we measure the degree to which access and opportunity, as you just talked about in, um, in your mission and vision discussion, uh, that it can be maybe predictable by socioeconomic status or students with disabilities, students uh, who are multilingual learners and other characteristics and looking at what are the opportunities that we're creating, the conditions that we're creating for our kiddos, looking at course selection and enrollment patterns and what are the data sets that we can use to help shift policy or make recommendations for funding, et cetera. So in the, in the nest of, um, of scaling up and down, we're always talking about our roles. Again, what is the role of us building capacity and providing support? What does that look like at the local level and at the school level? So as you look at each one of these levels, when we talk about our capacity and support, we're really talking about measuring the degree to which we are creating the conditions for student success. And I love that you brought that into the, into the conversation earlier because that is something that we can measure. So that includes like creating um, essential conditions for ensuring opportunity and agency effectiveness and efficiency. And that could be something like the way we are administering federal and state grants and when we have um, our audits, are we, get, are we having findings or not? Uh, do we have internal controls in place that mitigate risk? Uh, those are the kinds of things we might look at. And things like teacher professional learning and educator preparation programs and key performance indicators on some of the specific operational outcomes that we have. When we talk about local capacity and support, I'm really trying to breathe between each one of these, by the way. Um, when we talk about local capacity and support, 
we're really talking about measuring the degree to which our LEAs and school boards are, cre are how they're creating the conditions for student success. So for example, um, do all students have access to reasonably experienced, qualified, effective educators across the schools? <coughs> Excuse me. What are the student outcomes mm -hmm. for students engaging in advanced coursework and looking at teacher and administrator average pay? What does that look like from LEA to LEA or from school to school? When we get down to school quality, it's, we're really talking about measuring the degree to which schools are meeting student needs and enabling student success. So student attendance, teacher engagement data, a number of students in the school who are proficiency in literacy, et cetera. So that's that kind of nested approach to all of the various roles and how each set creates conditions and major, is able to measure the kind of outcomes that we're getting and responsible for. And um, you know, when you look at when you look at this framework and the solutions therein, this is a way to really align systemically all those efforts to outputs and outcomes instead of having activities and inputs and a lot of things that it's nice to know but it really doesn't get to the outcomes. This is a way to align all of those efforts. It also allows us to really clearly develop those um, indicators that address the operational outcomes at our level and at the local level. Like when we're having those conversations about, well, who really influenced this? Isn't it great if we all influence it, but what is our role in that? And how can we get really clear about it? And it also demonstrates alignment with existing responsibilities across across the system, and that in itself creates coherence. So we see this framework as a solution to some of those things that we've all grappled with and had been having conversations about over time. So I just like to highlight quickly some of the existing USBE data sets that were considered as part of this development effort. Um, you'll see that in the design phase, we took all of our existing measures in education, elevated the USBE strategic plan and the existing legislative performance measures to look for alignment, coherence, and redundancy. It was important for our agency to begin with these measures, noting they are already data systems that we have in place. Not only does this eliminate potential costs for a new performance me measure system, but also allows us to continue the great work that has already been started um, by Representative Pulsifer and the Reports and Requirements Task Force to really reduce those reporting requirements at the LEA and school level. In addition to that, you'll note that the agency looked at the continuous improvement data. Um, so this is a data set that actually Finance Committee heard about today related to some work in the grants management system to really build into a comprehensive needs assessment to again reduce a requirement for LEAs to do a needs assessment for every single grant they're doing, but instead to have one. And so if they're doing a needs assessment in terms of qualifications for data, we wanted to see an alignment between what those measures were and ultimately what was being reported in a performance measure system. Um, in addition to that, we did note um, that the legislature had invested in some additional infrastructure to gather experiential data, such as the educator engagement and exit survey and school climate survey. Um, so we did look at um, incorporating some of those data sets to elevate the voice of our community um, and really take the next step in reporting the current status of the system. In addition to that, um, I also just like to highlight the domains. Um, so this is an addition to the framework. We noticed that the framework categories are great, but we also wanted to draw alignment across the different framework categories. So if we're reporting something at a statewide level, how are we also reporting that at a local level and a school level? And so you'll see that those domains are represented here in terms of measuring student outcomes, experiential data, human capital, in the system, systems operations, demographics, and finance. So in terms of, if we can go to the next slide, um, I'd just like to give a high level of the PDF that you have available to you in the backup. Um, so I appreciate that the PDF is maybe not the most reader friendly, and we do have a solution for that. Um, so of those 
36 pages of Excel spreadsheet. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of what types of measures you can see within each of the um, reciprocal performance framework categories in terms of capturing the overall vision. So first and foremost, we have our statewide outcomes and indicators. In this section, you'll see um, we do have reporting related to enrollment trends because that is such a big factor in terms of how K-12 education receives the majority of our funding. Um, in addition to that, um, we do have graduation rate as well as the state readiness uh, coursework outcome data. So again, this is uh, the percentage of our students who are participating in concurrent enrollment, AP, IB, um, and CTE completer pathways, and something we've always reported on related to Ed Elevated. In addition to that, we do have the state assessment data outcomes. I've captured that as a broad category, but it does represent represent for all the different um, aspects of the state assessment from math, English language arts, and science, each called out specifically by their individual um, assessment, as well as some of the additional assessments given related to early literacy, early mathematics, as well as kindergarten readiness. Addition to that, we do have the state NAEP scores. Um, so this was a component the legislature had felt strongly about in the initiation of performance measures, um, giving them kind of an outside point of view about how do our reporting related to our state assessments then reflect in terms of a more national assessment um, related to the readiness of our students. And then in addition to that, you see we also have educator mentor data. Um, this is information that does come from the teacher uh, engagement survey or the educator engagement survey that's issued every two years. Um, and so we thought it was important to report out on how many of our teachers have access to a mentor um, and the success of that experience, noting it is also a key policy uh, initiative and funding request that we see repeatedly coming from the agency. So we wanted to have a measure to be able to help us track where we are in terms of when we receive resources, what the outcome looks like. In addition to that, we have our system opportunity indicators. Um, you'll see here that we have um, state early learning assessment data. So we did move our early learning space into systems opportunity to really help frame, are we setting students up for success? And what do we see those needs knowing those kids will be with us in the system for the next 11 to 12 years, um, depending on when they start school. We do have a call out related to the mental health needs for six through 12. Um, this is a data Data set that we see being used very regularly by um, individuals who are working on safe UT as well as some of the um, mental health components and systems such as the recent um, legislation related to social media and our students. So we wanted to again just have a measure uh, that, that spoke to that being a priority of many of our policymakers. In addition, we have attendance expulsion and suspension state data. This is really meant to get at, you know, the focus on our students have access to really robust learning experiences when they're in school. Um, and so that if they're not in school, that we do see kind of a disruption in that learning opportunity. And how is that disruption potentially being captured um, through this existing data set? Lastly, we do have both uh, the percent of Utah teachers who are professionally qualified for their assignment by licensing category, as well as, we're being a little bold here, the number of licenses recommended and the percent of new educators working in Utah public schools from our Utah Institutes of Higher Education. This data set really is designed to get at the teacher um, potential like the, the hiring challenges that are happening related to maybe not having enough teachers to bring into the classroom. So we wanted to bring transparency in alignment with another uh, legislative funding request uh, related to the Grow Your Own and how those pieces could complement each other. And Sarah, a good example of that was shared in Standards and Assessment today. Dr. Height shared some of the data that would be used uh, as a performance measure for those of you that were in that committee. So next in our category, we have USBE capacity and support. Um, we do have uh, USBE financial transactions just to demonstrate that kind of key performance indicator of some of the value add of the operational side of the agency. Um, 
we also have USBE staff and supervisor average salary and turnover. That is meant to mirror what's happening and reporting at the LEA level, just to be able to give um, kind of a sense related to, again, some of the agency requests for market rate adjustments um, and some of the reporting we've seen in our audits related to concern about turnover. In addition to that, we have uh, compliance with federal, federal and state requirements. Um, so this is gonna be specific to, again, some of our existing measures related to Carson Smith, as well as um, how we're in supporting LEAs and meeting those requirements. And then we are gathering measures related to the number of educators being supported through CTE, teaching and learning and special education through the programs that this uh, um, and training opportunities that this agency specifically offers. Finally, we do have measures for the existing four goals of the USBE strategic plan to incorporate those components with into the overall reporting for this system. I've got two more and I know they're the biggest, so I'm gonna try and go as quickly as possible. So this is going to be our LEA component. So you'll see again, we have enrollment trends. We think it's really important that we continue to track those enrollment trends. Again, noting that that's a huge financial uh, driver in terms of what access uh, those LEAs have to um, state and potentially federal dollars. We have FTE for licensed and classified staff. I will note classified staff was specifically requested from the field in terms of making sure that we're representing for that. I think there was some concern out of the recent session that those classified staff weren't necessarily recognized for the roles they play within our system. And this gives us an opportunity to call that out. This one is, you shouldn't have favorites in performance measures, but I do. Um, and it is the percent of total state restricted funding passed through to LEAs. Now you might be like, that's a boring one, but let me tell you why it's not. So one of the things that we always hear um, both when we're up uh, talking with legislators and more to when we're talking with the field is that it can be really challenging to apply for all of the programs that are out there and that that's a pretty massive administrative burden. But how do you capture that burden? So this is our way of capturing it. So we're looking at taking the total amount of state restricted funds that could be passed through to an LEA and measuring it versus how much they're actually receiving. So for us, it gives us a way to look at, especially our rural and charter school communities, to say what type of administrative burdens are being placed on you and how is that being reflected in your access to resources in terms of educating kids. In addition to that, we have components related to salaries, related to administrators and teachers, noting again, that has been some legislative priorities in previous sessions. We do have, again, the percent of LEA teachers and their qualifications and educator licensing. We do get down to average LEA educator and special education years of experience. We did call those two out um, separately because we noticed there's a discrepancy between those two populations. Um, and then again, total percent of that state restricted funding and LEA state assessment data, attendance data, climate educator engagement, and incident data. So we kind of captured all of that in the uh, experience piece. Kelsey, I have one more. So this is school quality. Again, we're looking at enrollment trends. Um, I'll note at the school level, the enrollment trends piece does also provide a reflection related to some of the recent um, conversations around school closures. We feel like there could be more awareness in the community if we had a, a clear, more uh, straightforward reporting metric that was consistent. Um, school state assessment outcomes, readiness coursework, um, four-year graduation rates, and suspension and student incident data to capture school level. Last but not least, um, we do have some performance measures that don't necessarily fall into one of these categories. And so I'll just call out that we do have um, two additional sections that come at the end of the spreadsheet. One is for provider outputs. So these are specific programs like IC as well as POPs that do provide where USBE is a pass-through to providing them funding related to services they provide. We know it's important for the legislature to know how many students and 
and teachers they're serving, but we wanted to call that out as not necessarily work that the agency is doing, but that we are monitoring in terms of outcomes. We also have program specific outputs and outcomes. This captures dual language immersion, digital teaching and learning, intergenerational poverty, um, and some of the other programs that do have specific measure requirements in code. And so we again put those separate um, because we would like the legislature to potentially consider whether all of those need to continue to be measured or if our new system really helps to address what they're looking for from a comprehensive standpoint and that some of those may not be as necessary to them moving forward. Um, last but not least, we do note that um, we do are responsible as an agency for three other sets of performance measures. And you'll see those listed on the screen um, for some of the agencies that you as the state board um, work with and kind of have governance and oversight for. We did not ask USDB, the charter schools, or the RISAs to be involved in this first round, mainly because we just wanted to kind of get to a space where we had the USBE house in order before we could then say, okay, this is what the legislature has decided to approve and move forward with so that it gives them a clearer vision of what types of components they may want to choose to iterate from, um, from our existing approved uh, measures to then hopefully streamline and expedite that process for them. So kudos to Chief of Staff Young for modeling best practice as an educator using multiple modalities. For those of you that love spreadsheets and got lost in all of the numbers and the columns and it brought you joy, awesome. For those of you that, pr that prefer words in a summary form, awesome. So hopefully there was something uh, in either the spreadsheet form or those slides that help you understand what we're talking about now when we talk about performance measures and the intent to really provide a seamless opportunity to use the data we have at hand to create a coherent system of measuring outcomes. So we uh, have a little timeline for you just to show you next steps. As you look at where we're at, um, we're here in the end of summer. I guess we really call this fall when we're into September, although it feels like summer. So we've been working with experts to develop the measures and the targets in all the domains that we just uh, shared with you. And we reviewed the draft with the reporting requirements task force and got a favorable recommendation. We, ish. Yeah, so we're actually still working on getting on that agenda. Okay, Sorry, that's my, my, my bad, yeah. sir. Take note of that. It's in our court. Okay. We got a scheduled next meeting, which is gonna come shortly, so. Okay. So just correction on that. I was thinking that earlier this spring you kind of went over it, but I think that was the reciprocal framework. We, yes, we did. Just the framework. We'd okay. Like to bring them back. All right. So so taking the draft to the reporting task force, and um, then also again reviewing the draft with superintendent, charter directors, and business administrators, and you know we've we've been getting their input along the way, but wanting to make sure that they see this whole final uh, concept. And then here we are in September presenting it to you and our target for the Public Edu Education Appropriations Committee is October that we are on their agenda for the October meeting to present these. So um, that's kind of the overview of where we're at and where we're headed. And I think that brings us to the end. Um, so thank you for indulging us as we tell the story of looking back and looking forward with performance measures and we're really excited about the way ahead. And, and you as board members have engaged and driven a lot of that conversation to help shape it to what it is today. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. If I could just do a little bit of a, <laughs> uh, that, that's a heck of a lot of work, uh, you know, and a lot of, a million moving pieces brought into a coherent picture of how we tell how we're doing and then how we're doing. So there's a ton in there. Um, questions, comments, again, we're not here to, you know, revise or tweak or wordsmith, but there's a lot in there that I think informs what we do as we think about strategic planning, right? So we can, you know, if you have questions about it in terms of the process per se, as we report and take this to the legislature, or questions about how all this work might inform what we're doing in our strategic planning process, questions, comments, we got a few minutes, Member Davis. 
sometimes I hate that these are public meetings because my I'm showing my ignorance, but I think a lot of words were just said and a lot on the screen to see. And I don't want to miss the key point. <laughs> so I'm just saying, what is the key takeaway here? What is the, the, the so what of all this? Is it because in code there are 128 performance measures and we are going to suggest to the legislature that they streamline it down into a um, achievable, understandable framework? Is that the key takeaway from this? Or is this just all of those performance measures we're going to report on and here's all the categories and we're going to do it? That's a, it's a really important question, thank you, because it really distills down to coherence in the system, number one. I mean, that's what we've been missing. We've had all these disparate sets of indicators and measurements and some were inputs, outputs. So what are the true outcomes that we want to measure? Not just for the line items that, that are required, but it gives us an opportunity to bring everything into coherence, looking from, again, our role, the LEA role, the school level, and, you know, heaven forbid, it might just um, actually help steer legislation towards the outcomes that we're looking for. So that's part of it. That's sort of the overview of it. But then there are some ancillary reasons behind it as well. Yes. So what we've actually done is, is part of this, we're recommending the elimination of several performance measures um, and instead we're trying to design a system that answers people's questions in one space as opposed to many spaces. So one of our tracking efforts is we looked at where are all of these reported and I can tell you it is all over the place. Like not even like within the like two clicks of each other on the website. We're talking like six to eight mm -hmm. um, to be able to move from one data set to another to another. Um, and so we're really trying to create something that is more comprehensive to your question. If this is something that the legislature decides to move forward with, we would be interested in translating this into like the interactive dashboard that allows people to say like, I'm really interested in graduation, click. It's like, okay, great, where's my LEA? Click, okay, what does that LEA look like? You know, but maybe for my school as compared to those other schools. Now, are there mechanisms for that currently? There are, but they live in different dashboards across um, our reporting mechanisms. And so we would look to reduce that redundancy and really streamline into a single place that to be honest, hopefully not only our policymakers, but that our parents see as valuable related to understanding. If I choose this school for my child, how does that compare to the neighborhood school down the street? Um, which again, we have a school comparison tool, but it doesn't draw from all of these data sets. And we think that having that additional transparency will help. Chair, may I summarize in one sentence what I think I heard? Hmm. So what I think I'm hearing is that we are doing all of this for public practitioner and policymaker ease of use and transparency. I see nods. <laughs> Yay. Okay. That, that's our new mission statement, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Well, it's just so your good. brain does, takes lots of, you know, side trips when you listen to a long presentation. I really appreciate your patience with my questions. Thank you. Number one. Probably similar um, need to clarify in my own brain. So you said no new data, which means all of this is what our outside the system is doing. And we're just trying to bring it in from disparate locations and bring it into a central location. In the end, when we look at all of this and we bring it all together, do we hope that it will impact policy, that it will impact, like, like our, our literacy program? We know we have low rates. We're working as a system from A to Z to make that work. We'll see other areas where that same push might be able to happen instead of all these. I, I've noticed with the last two months contracts, 
wow, the legislature makes us spend a lot of money on programs that may or may not be effective in the end. And hopefully this will yep. focus us better. That was really well said, and I'll just jump on your literacy example. So when Dr. Thronson, who's here with us, is looking at is, is the initiative working or not, she's not just looking at Acadian's data. You know, she's pulling in the strength of coaching in a particular school, the kind of professional learning that they've had, how many educators um, have been through letters, what, are the, what kind of support are the paraeducators getting, like looking at all of these factors and trying to determine what are the elements that, that resulted in a particular outcome. And that's, I love that you use that example because that's a microcosm of what we're trying to say in terms of you take all these data sets to say what is it that makes a difference? Is making a difference in the school? Is making a difference in the system? How do we replicate that, scale it up, ask for resources? So you summarized it very well. I think uh, we've just found our two champions in the summaries of you and Member Davis. So well stated. I will also just add, so we're not unique as an agency in the fact that we have performance measures. All the state agencies do. And the goal of building out that system from what's been reported by both LFA and the Governor's Office of Planning and Budget is to your point, to be able to provide the relevant data about the overall health of the system to our policymakers so that when they're saying what are the needs, they're not just relying on maybe what they've heard um, in from independent constituents, but that they do have a robust data set to be able to say, what does that look like? And then how can I, as a policymaker, work with the state board to be able to figure out solutions? So we're going to be more evidence-based. Yes. <laughs> can I? Um, I have a question. Um, oh, go ahead. Bless your heart, and then, sorry, who's that online? Is that Klein. Member Klein? Okay, gotcha. Yes. Um, I guess, I, from what I hear, all agencies have to do this. Um, this, um, when we pull all of our measures together, I'm overwhelmed almost by the data. I, my next thought goes to, I don't want to reinvent the wheel for our strategic plan. I, I, I want to pull from the data that we have at hand. I. I have no interest in adding to that list. I'm only interested in subtracting and clarifying and and that kind of thing. So I you know, I guess it's because of our agenda today, but my initial reaction is let's use the information we have um, to make good decisions and um, let's try to make that go together. Do you think the question is, do you think that that um, do you see an issue with that or a problem if we were to go down that road for measures for our strategic plan? Would that be useful? Okay. Okay. So yes, and ideally, if whatever the board decides related to your strategic plan and your goals, we would then adjust what those strategic plan measures would look like to align with that vision. Okay. Um, and so really, we see this as an opportunity to be more coherent related to the reporting yeah. and not needing to have one report um, for the agency, one report on the strategic plan, and one report for the legislature, that we could just have one comprehensively I, that addresses those needs. I am very excited about that, and now I feel kind of guilty for complaining about having two plans <laughs> that I had to pull data from. I mean, you have hundreds of data points and data measures, and it's just astounding the data we have it, at hand. Um, I think it's a huge Herculean task to pull it all together and make it, um, we keep using the word coherent, but I mean, even just being presented with it was, was um, quite an experience. So thank you. Um, we've got a lot of good information at our fingertips. It also makes me think of that uh, uh, data rich, information poor. We need to make sure that we are able to use the data or else there's no point in having it. 
Member Klein? Uh, yes. To me, this sounds just like the accountability redesign that we as a board rejected last November. How is this different? So the redesign, I, as I understand, and maybe Vice Chair Hart can weigh in, I, I think that had some policy changes in mind or, or the way of, of, of measuring accountability where this is, I think, a systematizing and bringing coherence to measures that the legislature have asked us to track, but we're pulling it together in a much usable way, a much more usable way without making specific recommendations for assessment, which the other task force did. Am I getting that right? I mean, this isn't so much a policy recommendation as just fine tuning how we gather useful data as a, well, as I a, have a better yeah, answer. I, she as was a, on that. I was on that. And the legislature was going down a path where they wanted to figure out a way to use data to make an evaluative or um, make to draw some conclusions. What I see this is more of a almost a data library, like organizing the information that we have and clarifying what we have. Um, whereas um, the accountability framework, quite, quite frankly, was something that would be in policy and would actually be done with, you know, some cooperation, but really it's a, it's a mandate. It's done to us where this is us looking internally at what we have and making sense of it so that we make good decisions, I think. is um, That's my, I, I see a real difference between the use of the data with the accountability um, framework. Um, I mean, it's obviously, the, the parallel is that it's the data, but it's it's for different purposes. I That's my interpretation. I think I would just add, if I may, I, Member Klein, that I, I'm, I would have to go back and listen to the conversation again to be precise, but I'm reflecting on it wasn't so much a, a rejection. The board just took no action on the accountability redesign recommendations. And I'm recalling some of the conversation, not all, but some was based on uh, sort of the then what, if we don't do what we're already doing and, and a lack of clarity about how, how everything was connected, but I will go back and, and listen so I can be more precise. Did that, did all of us, uh, I know we all attempted to answer your question, but did we get there, ma'am? Well, I think it sounds like the implementation of the accountability redesign bypassing the policy making process essentially and the data is the accountability. So whether we call it, 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 regardless of whether we call it transparency, the data is what creates the accountability. Go, go ahead. I, so let me just ask some clarifying questions. Almost all of this, if I'm not wrong, is already required by the legislature. They require it and they're requiring it to be reported. And so um, I think this is, consolidating and maybe um, putting it into a better organization because we like that word organization excellence anyways it's trying to put it into an organization um, because it has to be presented and maybe even asking to to um, consolidate those into more cohesive um, roles I don't know if that at least that's the way I kind of understood it so we're gonna have to report out next month regardless yes so, and Member Klein, I would what just, you've described is sorry. sounds like accountability to me. Well, it, if I may, uh, Ms. Superintendent Dixon, I, it is an accountability to us as the board. The accountability system, when we're when we're talking about current school accountability, that's holding the schools accountability. This is holding us accountable from the legislature. So yes, they're both account accountability systems. Um, and it would be nice for them to be connected. I think that was laid out in the um, accountability redesign. How can we use some different and additional 
measures in addition to what has been traditional in legislation. So hopefully that helps. Yes, they're both accountability. But yes, One it sounds like you're accountable. what I said, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? I, I have, well, I would ask this offline, but it might be helpful. And I don't know if you can answer it all. I'm just curious in the, in the formal process of doing all this organization, if anything jumped out at you in terms of indicators, you know, I mean, again, this is, this is your job and you're doing it and it's going to the legislature and I think it's a job well done. And then there's a question of how do we use that in sort of our own thinking as we do strategic planning. And so I'm not asking for recommendations, policy suggestions, just if you saw anything in there that jumped out about the interplay between different performance measurables or something that said, huh, that tells me something about how we're doing that I didn't know. Anything like that that you're able to share? And I don't, I won't be, feel bad if you <laughs> say that's a bit of an ambush. <laughs> so Chief of Staff Young, I would say I actually, and I don't know if it helps this board in terms of like the strategic planning element, but I will say one of the things that jumped out at me was the fact that um, as we were going through this, most of our LEAs have a local strategic plan. They have their own set of measures, their own set of potential indicators that they're looking at. And there's a lot of opportunity for coherence in that space. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes it can be really frustrating when you feel like there's multiple expectations and you're like, I don't know how to meet all of these. And so we as a state have never necessarily said like outside of, well, we have education elevated and then we have these performance measures and we have these reports we're asking LEAs to complete. The thing that jumped out at me was that this is an opportunity to say this, like this is the data set that as an LEA we're looking at in relationship to the state data. And I think that that has incredible potential to be able to also help inform future work for LEAs in terms of their strategic plans to say, okay, which of these elements are our strengths? Which are these elements do we choose to work on at the local level? And how do we then see those metrics feed ultimately improvements to the overall system? Very cool. Well, thank you. Other questions, comments? Well, we could actually conclude early, I guess. I mean, um, <laughs> perish, the, perish the thought. It doesn't quite balance out, but you know, hey, it's it's something. Uh, well, th thank you. I I think this is um, a heck of a lot of work and great out. And and I saw this. I I don't. I just kind of mentioned this. I'm just speaking as a board member. But when Chief of Staff Young showed me this, she wasn't really hyping so much that there were more outcomes than inputs. But that just kind of leaped out as we were looking at what used to be and how it was consolidated, organized. I just think it gives a lot better picture of the ultimate target that we're all trying to hit. And so thank you. As, as we now talk about where we're trying to go, you know, we can all follow up individually about how to use the, the, the measures, right? And how to dig in there. And that might inform our thoughts about where we've come and where we're going. And I'll just say, we're always torn between you know, some who say, oh, we're, we're failing and others who are <laughs> pointing out we're doing amazing stuff. And so, you know, the process of strategic planning is me as one of 15 is you look at where you've come and then how do you take the next level up? And, and this I think is just hugely helpful in that process because we're doing amazing things. And I've said a million times how glad I am that when the world fell apart, my kids were in Utah. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, just a great place to be with people that had their heads on straight, were working hard, doing the right things for kids. And, and so we did a lot of good stuff. And then as a healthy organization, we're always looking at, okay, that's awesome. How do we go better, right? And measurement is a big part of that. So I just think this is a great tool for us to use as policymakers. You know, how is our policy helping advance those goals? Um, we're not in the classroom. I mean, people are in the classroom in their own capacity, but how does our policy discussion orient us toward improvement and how do those performance measures that we already have help us know where to go next? So. Rambling way of saying thank you. I think it's hugely useful for us as policymakers in trying to make good decisions. Sorry. No, I, I guess my only other question um, to answer later is 
I would like to hear about ways that the board can support this work and support you in doing this work and what you need from the board in order to um, realize the goals. So just in the future, um, those are things that I would be interested in hearing um, how to support that work because I think it's valuable. Thank you. I, I, I will do go. it. We'll be there. I'll, yes. We, you, you'll be there. All right. If that's it, any final motion? Uh, I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, thank you all, and we will come back for the next step. We took a vote today. We took some action, and we got educated, so we're moving. We're moving forward. <laughs> Have a great weekend. <laughs>